Thank you so much. And uh, I've just been notified that not only are you here, but your lovely wife is here too. Well, that's good because she's my vastly better half. That's good. That's good. And your wife is uh, Nancy. 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 Nancy Salmon. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. She deserves a major award. For Thir 36 years with the same. Wow. Loser. <laughs> Don't be mean to you. That's me. <laughs> okay. Well, that is me. 36 years with uh, the same salmon. Same salmon. <laughs> so many. So many in the school, and she well, chose that's you. Well, another acronym, you know. SOS, same old salmon. Same old salmon. <laughs> well, so what's going on? You know what you hardly ever hear about anymore is, is politics. Yeah. No, and it's refreshing. Yeah. There just aren't enough, uh, enough days in the week. We appreciate you being here. I know you're busy. Thanks for swimming upstream to get here. <laughs> All right. Note to self. I'm laughing inside, Mark. Two, thank you, Lee. Um, so what's going on in Washington? I know there's more than we care to know about, but uh, uh, enlighten us with why you're here today. Well, I, I came today to talk a little bit about uh, a, a vastly needed program here in the Valley, and it's something that the city of Mesa and the United Way will be kicking off. It's called MVP, uh, the Mesa Veterans Program. And I think that dealing with our veterans when they uh, come back from serving our country uh, is one of the most important jobs that we in government have, whether it's at the federal level, uh, the state or the local level. And with a lot of the force adjustments and in uh, common uh, vernacular, that means layoffs, a lot of uh, uh, veterans are being forced out of their jobs. And uh, there are a lot of folks that are coming back into civil society that uh, really need a helping hand in a big way. We've got a lot of great programs, I think, at the federal level, but there's still a lot of people that fall through the cracks. Uh, we have, uh, you know, tuition programs uh, through the GI Bill uh, for veterans coming back. And I do believe, I, you know, I've met with uh, the folks at the at Chandler Gilbert, uh, Dr. Lujan, who I think is really recognizes that this is one of the most important functions that she has, and that is to make sure that veterans that are coming back and wanting to get uh, an education are a top priority and that the kind of cookie cutter way that we treat students doesn't necessarily work for a lot of veterans that are coming back and some of them kind of lost. Uh, and I think uh, there are a lot of big gaping holes in, in our service at the federal level. We, we saw uh, in the last couple of years that uh, we had the uh, notoriety of being uh, the epicenter of the VA scandal uh, here with Phoenix. And I'd like to say that Congress has fixed, it, fixed everything. We can dust our hands, pat ourselves on the back, and move on. But the truth is, in many ways, after allocating billions a year more to the veterans, uh, the VA, uh, I think it's as badly broken as it's ever been. And, and I think that a lot of people believe, you know, when President Obama made changes at the top that everything would, would you know, somehow fall into place. That's not the way it is. In fact, I think in a lot of ways, uh, we need to go back to square one uh, with the VA and, and get right down to what exactly its mission is. Because our, uh, our friend over there, Elton John, uh, that is at the piano, um, he handles veterans' issues for my office. And um, he'll tell you that it is, uh, while it's a labor of love, it's one of the most exasperating things that he's probably ever done in his life because he runs into brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. And we were uh, just talking about this uh, yesterday, he and I, and uh, we are frustrated, very frustrated that so many of our veterans go to the VA for their health care issues. And while I think the things at the hospital might be getting moderately better, they're only better when we stomp and scream. And it shouldn't have to happen that way. A person shouldn't have to have a congressman get involved uh, before they're treated right by the VA. And yet, that happens time after time. The, <laughs> the biggest issue is not necessarily now what's happening at the hospital, because I think there are some improvements, not nearly enough. 
And I think one of the best aspects of what we did last year was a thing called Veterans Choice, which allows veterans to vote with their feet if they're not being, uh, being given the services, if they live, uh, you know, what, what is it, within 30 miles, Lee? 30. Yeah, uh, of, the, of a veterans facility, they can actually go to a private care provider. I'd like to uh, modify that a little bit to allow all, all veterans choice, allow all veterans the same options that congressmen have and their staffs have, so that if they have an issue, uh, they can uh, go and get treated. Um, so I think the hospital things are getting somewhat better, but I think we need some major changes uh, still in that area. The uh, area where it's not being improved at all, in fact, I think it's as bad, if not worse, as it's ever been, is in the benefits <laughs> side of the VA, where uh, somebody has a disability or you know, needs, uh, uh, needs some financial uh, help that they've been promised, and they apply uh, for the veterans' benefits, and the time, uh, I mean, it takes years before a lot of these cases are ever finally, uh, you know, brought to a conclusion. Uh, and by law, they're supposed to uh, resolve these cases within a year, and I'd love to say that that's happening, but it's just not. And a lot of these veterans fall through the cracks. So I think that the idea that Mesa right now is coming up with this idea is it vastly important from mental health issues, education issues, employment issues, and homeless, uh, because we have a number of, it's one of the dirty secrets, I think, here in the United States. There are far too many veterans that, uh, that are homeless. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, just to clarify, I know Lee helps you a lot. He doesn't do it dressed like this, does he? No, no. In fact, uh, that would be unfair. No, he normally wears a Speedo and a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> What's wrong with that picture? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, a couple of questions from our audience. Do we have people that help returning vets re-enter society? Yeah, and I think that that is what the, the, the federal programs are supposed to be about, uh, but far too many uh, veterans are falling through the cracks. And one of the things I did neglect to talk about, I think, is probably one of the biggest single issues that we face for veterans coming home, and it's, uh, it's mental health issues. Uh, far too often, uh, veterans are coming home with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and uh, uh, dealing with them in education, employment, the vast array of you know, things that we just take for granted uh, are challenging, far more challenging for a lot of these veterans coming home. And, I don't believe we're doing anywhere near the job that we owe them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, here's a, a comment. Um, regarding the logo up on the screen, Mesa Veterans Program is a program in the Mesa Chamber working with Mesa United Way, the city, the business, and education. So, right. And that's what it's going to take. I think um, anybody that relies solely on government to solve our problems would probably believe uh, the statement when I first sit down, maybe uh, I'm from Washington and I'm here to help you. Um, that's just not the way things are. I think that if we're gonna solve the problems for the veterans, it's gonna take all of us working together. It's gonna take employers being understanding and uh, going the extra mile to help out veterans. I think it's gonna, the, the financial institutions, when a veteran wants to try to figure out a way to go his own, his or her own way and create a small business. Uh, you know, being a little bit more uh, stand up when it comes to dealing with them. Healthcare, uh, uh, you know, all, all of education, uh, all of the things that we've talked about, um, I think that the only way to really resolve it in a positive way, and we in Mesa can't fix it for the rest of the country, but we can sure fix it for here. And I think that's what we have to focus on is that we're all going to work in tandem. We are our brother and our sister's keeper. And especially when it comes to veteran, we're not going to let those veterans fall through the crack. And I think that um, I could not envision any better uh, group of actors than the ones that you just mentioned. The city of Mesa, I, you know, I, I've been here since I was 12 years old. I'm really proud of this city. I think that Mesa has led the way in a lot of wonderful things. Sally's doing great things with the chamber, and we've got the Mesa United Way that um, I, I sat on their board for years and years and years, and you know they really do stand in the gap in people's lives. And unlike a lot of the groups out there that are more about their own uh, aggrandizement than they are solving problems, 
the Macy and Annie Way is really a, where the rubber meets the road kind of an organization that, that really cares about people. And so I think if we can't do it together, it can't be done. But I don't believe that that is the case. I think we can do it. And I think that we've got the right people put together. And I'm proud that our business leaders and our mayor and, and uh, uh, all the folks uh, you know, that have been mentioned have designated this as a top priority because it really is. And if we can't stand for taking care of those who risk their lives for our freedom, if we can't stand for that, then what are we even doing here? Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> I, uh, now, you graduated from Mesa High, is that I correct? Did. Yeah, that's all. Mighty jackrabbit, a little bit of an oxymoron there, right? Unless you saw Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Those <laughs> rabbits were pretty devastating. Wait a minute, you were the mighty jackrabbits? That's right. Wow, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> did you have the, was the mascot a big jackrabbit? It was, it was, a, it was a bunny rabbit, yeah. <laughs> Didn't look rabbit or please, anything. Just... Please tell me his name was Stu. No, no. I think his name was Jack. Jack, okay. <laughs> Rabbit stew for those of you scoring at your table. Um, so Mesa High, is that where you learned Mandarin? No, that's not where I learned Mandarin. <laughs> no, I learned Mandarin in the streets of Taiwan. Actually with the guy at the piano there. Really? Yeah, we were missionary buddies over in Taiwan and uh, it was back in the 70s before uh, uh, Taiwan actually became a a free uh, de democracy. When we lived there, it was a totalitarian government. Things were quite a bit different. Uh, they embraced uh, a de democratic lifestyle and uh, a way of doing things in their government, and amazing things are happening. In fact, I'm leading a congressional delegation at the behest of the Taiwan government, the president of Taiwan, in November. And uh, we're going over there one more time. But um, because of that and, and all that great experience, I'm, I'm the chairman of the Asia Pacific Subcommittee uh, for Foreign Affairs, and my purview is uh, China, India, uh, Taiwan, uh, Japan, Korea, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, um, Pakistan. And so I got quite a portfolio, a lot of things going on there, and my job is to uh, deal with all aspects of our relations with those countries. That's awesome. Um, speaking of veterans and, and things you're doing, I, I saw you all over the news. Tell us, give us the update on, uh, I, I hope I'm saying the name right, um, Tam Tamarisi? Tamarisi. He's really uh, having a, a tough row to hoe. Um, yeah, fill him in on that. Uh, well, uh, you, you might remember Sergeant Tamarisi was in a Mexican prison uh, for about seven months, and I got quite involved, uh, went and visited him in the prison on two occasions, uh, went and met personally with the Attorney General uh, of Mexico. And after seven long months, we were finally able to get him out. But um, before Andrew went in, and that's his first name, uh, before Andrew went into the prison, he was suffering already from pretty severely from uh, PTSD. And after uh, the treatment he received in the Mexican prison, uh, it's been exacerbated greatly. And he's gonna have a tough, tough row to hoe, and uh, I, I really worry about him. I worry about him every day, but I worry about um, all of the folks that are coming back uh, from serving over there, um, especially those that have, uh, you know, dealt with uh, head trauma. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very serious. It's a lot more serious than most of us understand. There are a lot of people out there that, you know, you, you gotta look beyond the smile uh, because there's a lot of pain in a lot of the folks that are coming back from uh, fighting overseas. Uh, and and uh, I think any time we see those folks, uh, you know, whether it's uh, in the airport or uh, on the street, I just would hope that you give them a big hug or a handshake or something and tell them how much you appreciate everything they've done. That's awesome. Um, One more question, and I know you could probably talk about this for a long time, so simple yes or no. Would it be smarter and more effective for one six-year term for president? Caught you off guard with that one. That's a pretty good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, that, um, I think that there's something to the idea that, you know, you're not gonna be there 
uh, for a protracted period of time, and if you serve one six-year term, it's very intriguing. I've never really even thought about it. Well, that's but, why. But, but if somebody uh, you know, served six years and didn't worry about standing for the next election, maybe they could really get down to business and do what they actually believe instead of you know, pandering. Uh, it, 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 that's all that happens these days. I, I mean, I run every, every two years. And I get really, really frustrated with, you know, all of the uh, telling people everything that they want to hear. Uh, the truth is, our nation is in serious financial trouble. It is. And um, people come to me all the time and, 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 you know, from one group or another and say, we need you to do everything you can to get rid of sequestration. And my answer to them is, you know, if we don't get control of the beast, you're going to look back at the good old days of sequestration because it's going to be so much more cataclysmic in that eight to 10 years from now if we stay on the same trajectory we're on. And the big 800-pound gorilla in the room that nobody ever wants to talk about because it's the third rail of American politics is mandatory spending. And it's the Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid that are consuming 70% of the federal budget. That means right now, folks, if we got rid of all military spending, all national parks, all transportation spending, all those things, we got rid of all of it tomorrow, we would still have close to a half a trillion dollar deficit a year. We are on a terrible trajectory, and if we don't fix it, and it's going to take some painful decisions. We cannot continue to be all thanks to all people. There are going to have to be some changes. And we're going to have to figure them out. And if we don't, you can do the math. It's going to be beyond painful. We look across the ocean at what's happening in Greece, and we think that can never happen. Well, I never thought that a major city in the United States would declare bankruptcy. But it's happening. And so we've got a lot of important uh, things to do. But uh, let, let me just close with this. I... I uh, you know, I, I think you, you got to leave on an optimistic note. I think, I think that we are up for this. I think we can do it. But we've got to get beyond just politics. I, I really believe that you know, both parties are to blame when it comes to the problems that we're in in America today. I mean, the Republicans had everything with Bush and, and the Senate uh, you know, and, and, and the House for a time. The Democrats had, had everything for a time. And all they've done is kick the can down the road. I'm not, I'm not you know, trying to say get rid of the parties, but I believe there needs to be a time when we step forward and we say, I'm an American. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm an American. And we better fix this because it's for everybody, Republican, Democrat, everybody. And uh, I think that, that at some point in time, I'm looking for candidates who are more about solving problems than they are putting a donkey or an elephant on their lapel. One, uh...